Hey guys, this is Joe from Joe's Base Camp. Welcome to the channel. I'm here at Doha Airport and we are on our way to Nepal. Where I'm going to be meeting up with an old mate of mine, Bill Crozier. And there we're going to be heading off to Mustang, the Forbidden Kingdom. Mustang was once an independent kingdom and it's got a very rich cultural history. We are going to be passing through Lomantang, the ancient walled city of Mustang. This place is a living testament to Mustang's ancient culture and heritage. We're also going to be confronting some of the challenges of such an ancient place being brought into the 21st century, for better or for worse. So there are a lot of road construction and infrastructure projects going on, including the Chinese-led Belt and Roads Initiative, and is changing things in the kingdom irreversibly. These challenges have raised questions about preserving the unique culture and environment of the area. The rugged landscapes of Mustang are particularly susceptible to climate change, posing a threat to the delicate balance of life in this high altitude realm. Amidst all these challenges though, there are some real concerted efforts to protect the fragile ecosystem and also Mustang's cultural heritage. Anyway, time for me to go. I've got to board the next flight. Can't wait to take you guys on the rest of the journey with me. It's going to be a fabulous journey. I haven't been into Upper Mustang before. The closest I've got to Upper Mustang before is Jomson. From everything I know about it, it's going to be an absolutely spectacular journey and worth it. So firstly, about the flight, this is particularly for those people on the channel who are coming from Australia or New Zealand. We've got a lot more variety in our flight paths now especially with airlines like Qatar and Etihad flying to Kathmandu. And normally I've traveled by Singapore Airlines or by Thai Silk. So they either go almost straight up with the stopover in either Singapore or in Bangkok, depending on which uh, airline you fly. This time to save myself a few hundred dollars, I decided to go with Qatar, which go by Doha and this is a huge dog I mean it's massive and it turns what is a, a reasonable flight into an in excess of 24 hour flight and I really found that messed me up Now, nothing against Qatar, Qatar were absolutely brilliant the flight itself was fantastic I ended up with seats beside me on every single flight so I had plenty of room to spread myself out food was fantastic service was great it was just that the length of time that it took me to get there. And especially on the way back, that really knocked me around because I also ended up with a, a six or an eight hour layover at Doha. So it took me over 30 hours to, to get back home. Something worth thinking about, the directness of your flight does matter, especially if you're getting straight into a trek and wanting to adjust fairly quickly so that you're in uh, a good space as you start your journey. Waiting for my bags again. I've been waiting at belt one and my bags are at belt five. Go on, Joe. I've woken up this morning with a bad back. That was starting to hurt a bit actually last night. So definitely think it was from the plane, just from sitting for so long so what i'm going to do this morning i'm going to go through some stretching um mobilization protocols that i use for situations like this and I'll hopefully get a bit of relief i've just sped through this because this is going to be released as a separate full-length video where i walk you through all the stretches and take you through the whole routine properly it's a great routine for anybody who gets soreness and tightness through the back and hips so saturday morning we fly and we've got a night in pokhara and we've got hot dates in pokhara and then johnson sunday johnson that's early morning flight yeah and then Jean Jeep to Cake Benny. Jeep we take, we do take. Jeep to, Jeep to Cake Benny, because paperwork in Cake Benny. We are. And then walk to Chile. Because yeah. between top to Cake Benny, it's just road, isn't it? It's terrible. I've walked yeah. it. I've walked from Cake Benny to 
jumps them. Yeah. It's awful. So just drive it. Because that's the main road after Mukhtana. So it's yeah. buses and keeps yeah. everything. It's awful. No, once you get the cake penny, it's quieter. Okay, so at the moment, I've got a, a bit of mayhem and bedlam in here. And we'll look around. So I am making the final cut. So I've got to go down from the 20 kilos of kit that I brought, 25 kilos of kit that I brought along. I've got to get it down to a total of 15. So, which is five kilos lighter than I thought it was. Schoolboy error, not checking the weight requirements of my final flight. But yes, it's just for the last, the last flights from Pokhara to Johnson. But you're only allowed 10 kilos in your main luggage and five kilos in your hand luggage. Yeah, I've got to plow through and make some cuts. That's what I'm doing now. <laughs> tomorrow and we just thought we would go to the Budnath tonight and do our circle around that to bring us luck and um, hopefully an auspicious trip. Here we are at the Budnath and everybody here is doing circles around and you'll see there's one guy over here who's prostrating himself and this is the holiest site in uh, in Nepal for Buddhists. Buddhnath, also known as Buddha or Kasakecha, is one of the most prominent landmarks in Kathmandu. Now it dates back to the 5th century AD. Buddhnath is one of the oldest and largest stupas in the world. This architectural marvel is more than a sight to behold. It's a story in stone. It supposedly enshrines the remains of Kasapa Buddha, who was the third Buddha, and the stupa represents a connection to the ancient Buddhist world. The design of Buddhanath is a marvel in itself. If looked at from the sky, you can see that it's a massive mandala. Its symbolic structure embodies the five elements and the path to enlightenment, making it a profound representation of Buddhist philosophy. But Buddhanath is not just about history, it's a living, breathing and cultural hub. As a central point for Tibetan Buddhism in Nepal, the area around the stupa is a vibrant community with over 50 Tibetan monasteries. It was declared a UNESCO heritage site in 1979, and Buddhanath is recognised globally for its cultural and historical significance. And every day thousands gather here for the Kora, a ritual walk around the stupa, reciting mantras and soaking in the aura of peace. Some will come as far as Tibet, having prostrated themselves, lying down on the ground every three steps of their 1,000 kilometre journey. Me and Bill have sequestered ourselves here at his Bill. Okay. Yeah. At the uh, the Roadhouse Cafe at the Buddha Nath, House, which and does awesome pizzas, but uh, one thing that doesn't seem to be make it onto the pizza menus over here is anchovies. And so, BYO. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> so, so Bill brought his own. I love it. Fantastic. Okay, so next leg of the journey. So me and Bill <laughs> right, heading off to the domestic terminal. Flight to Pokhara, got a night in Pokhara, meet up with some people, and then we are uh, off to Johnson at 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. Yep. 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. So this is the domestic that you can see here. We've got way too much stuff. We're going to hopefully get away with it, don't know if we will or not, but uh, it's not too much if we. If we do get pinged, let's see. Anyway, better go, gotta go through security. Okay, first hurdle, flight's delayed. Arrived in Pokhara, 
and a bit of a difference to, to Kathmandu. It's, still, it's, a, it's a large city, it's the uh, second biggest city in uh, Nepal, but it's just spread out all along the, the valley and along the edge of the lake. We're gonna take a walk down to the lake in a second. Just the air is so much cleaner. Down here on the lake side of Pokhara, and the, uh, it's quite busy down here because it's the start of the Festival of Descent. This is uh, a lot of people about. It's awesome. Got a, definitely got a holiday atmosphere. 